Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Today we're going to spend a day in the garden doing February chores. Well, welcome everybody to our sunny garden on this February day. We are so happy to have you with us as we kind of just do a day of gardening chores. We have a lot of things up our sleeve, but the first thing we're going to do is we are going to prune some of our deciduous trees, particularly our two maple trees and our birch trees. And the reason we're doing them now and not waiting until spring is because the sap will start flowing in the spring. And I, you know, we don't want them to cry. Yeah, we don't we want bleeding them. trees. <laughs> we don't want bleeding trees. So we want to do it now before the sap starts blowing because we don't want to invite those extra pests in. So come on along. So right over here, we have our paper bark maple, and this was one of the must have trees for our garden. And they're a pretty expensive tree at our local garden centers. And I think it's because they grow so slowly. And so when plants grow very slowly, what that means is that they take an extra amount of care at the garden centers because they're there for much longer. And so you see that in the cost. Um, but this one, we dig it at the end of the season on a clearance at some point from one of our favorite local garden centers, Fadigans. And uh, it's a small specimen and it was missing its leader, but it looks like it's reestablishing its leader now. It and does when, look a lot better than when we got it, even last year. Yeah, it's put on a ton of growth. But Christopher, zoom in on this bark. This hey. is why I love it. Just looks like a cinnamon stick. It's so pretty. And I love pruning and I love shaping. And so there's a couple of things that I consider when I'm pruning or shaping a tree. Anything that's obviously dead or diseased or dying comes off. Anything that's crossing is going to come off. Anything that's growing into the center is going to come off. And anything I don't like the look of is going to come off. So I'm looking at this tree and I am not seeing anything right off the bat, Christopher. Do you? Well, the one thing I will say, knowing that a paper bark maple does get pretty big and a very dense canopy, do you think we should lift the canopy now a little bit to try and encourage growth at the top? I don't think so. Because if I took this branch off, I feel like the tree would be super empty. And then if I took this branch off, I'd want to take this branch off. And then this branch would be all by itself. And that would look okay. weird. And then that would want to come off. And then we'd have no branches until right here. So right. not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But I will say that if you come over here, Christopher, from this angle, here's one example of a little branch that's growing inward that I would cut off. Let me get in closer there. So this is going into the center of the tree. I, I'm just cutting that off. Same thing here. And that's to keep the canopy loose, right? Open and area. Open and area in the center. So anything that's growing into the center, I'm just cutting off. This one is questionable because it's not going to be growing into anything. This branch, though, is. So I'm going to take the smaller, weaker branch off. This I'm going to leave to see how it does this year. This I'm wondering, like, what's going on with that? That's These a two. good question. Yeah. And then this is crossing here. Yeah, he's talking about this branch that goes up here. And then this bigger one that goes behind it. But you want... Ooh, See, we don't want to take this whole thing. But this do we want to take could watch. this one? I mean, I tend to be a little fearless in pruning, but I just, I like to think about it a moment first to kind of think about the shape. So I see that this is, this leader had been cut out before we had purchased it. And now I feel like this is going to be a place for like snow to collect or water to collect and maybe get in there. So I am wondering if I should cut this, maybe even cut these two. It won't hurt. It won't the hurt shape. it, so I'm just Do doing it. it. Yeah. We'll do that one. And we'll do this one. So then those two are not going to be near each other, which is great Honestly, news. it really didn't make a huge impact on the, the size of the no. top. 
like look at this this is like an odd growth happening here though this branch and yeah, then it's growing that direction kind of i feel like that looking. branch could come off but then i think we'd be a little unbalanced i think i was hoping that this would like sprout something pretty nice I mean, we can leave it and see, but obviously we'll take these off because they're growing inward. But we prune our baby trees every every winter, late winter, early spring, to get the shape that we want on them. Yeah, if you let it go too long, then you'd have to take out really big branches, and that could be detrimental. Better to get them when they're young. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with this right now. I'm just going to walk around it one more time and really look. See what's happening. Is anything jumping out at you, Christopher? No, I think the only consideration I had was whether we'd lift the canopy, but I think you're right. We lose so much of the tree. Yeah, not yet. We will lift it, and it probably will be lifted to here, mm -hmm. but not yet. Okay, Eric, we're now at the blood good Japanese maple in the part shade to shade. Yes, and the first thing I'm noticing, Christopher, are these branches here that want to compete with each other. Twisty turny. Yeah, I've noticed that about the blood good. I really hacked this back quite a bit last year, and I think it was off to a, it's it's off to a great start. There's some little branches that I want to cut out, like this one right here. I definitely want to take um, this down here, this little one, only because we have these hostas down here. I'll probably take like these. How's that? That looks good. Yeah, I'll take those. But like anything that's growing inward, I'm going to take these two are crossings. I'm going to take this one. These two are coming out of the same thing. I think I'm going to take this one, honestly. The hostas below here are Empress Wu, so they get almost three feet tall or more. And they actually look cool when the Japanese maple leaves are kind of resting on the hostas. Again, like this one, we did a pretty good job on last year, so it's in good shape heading into this year. So as when they're young, if you just keep up on them, and again, I am sure there are like Japanese maple pruning experts that are dying at this video right now. But this is just like, this is us. This is everyday gardener. Like we this love we gardening do. for a hobby. Um, it's taking on a really nice kind of vase shape from here. It is. I'm really happy with how it grew this past season. It put on a couple of feet too, which is really nice. Yeah. My only concern is this one like seeing how these two come together this year or i could just take it now take that and be one done with it you don't even miss it nope just be fearless nothing i mean what's the worst that's going to happen we wait a year for a, gro a branch to grow back yeah <laughs> so this right here is our shiloh splash river birch which is a small tree or a large shrub, and I'm sure Christopher can put a picture of the foliage of this in season because it is spectacular. It's a variegated foliage. But I'm going to lift the canopy a bit because we have this limelight prime here. And I think in the like height of the growing season, it does get a little squished. Gets a little squished, and then eventually down in the bottom there, it's going to really compete with anything on any ground covers or other perennials. We yeah, have. I think I'm just gonna do like a couple inches off the ground and kind of clean it up a bit. What do you think? That will look really nice. Got the kneeler, so I'm going in. Christopher, come on down here. And you can see like, it's been pruned, not by us, but probably by the grower or somebody. But what I'm gonna do is just kind of come around. When do you think we planted this? was this is the second this will be its third season in the ground i believe yeah and so and yeah it just cleans it up a little bit it just went from being a large shrub to a small tree oh it's really cute very very cute i like that a lot is there anything that needs to be 
decongested maybe? Yeah, I don't think so. There's I mean, something going on here. What about just taking this chunk out and me? Oh, this right here. Yeah, it's that. It's I that think. one. Sorry, I'm like, I'm pointing up. Oh, that was it. Tree pruning is fun. I love pruning. I don't know why. So before we can address this group of heritage river birch, I need to unfloral wrap, which makes the floral wrapping process seem a little bit less exciting to take it back down again, but I'm okay with it. It's uh, basically, I just take my tightly wound ball of lights and I get really close in and out of the branches. And then you really have to do almost the exact same process in reverse. It's not like you can just stand on the other side of the lawn and pull. Whoop. Many, many moments later, we're close. We're getting closer to the end. <laughs> and the neighbors think I look crazy. Oh, I mean, I did help a little bit. I had to put the camera down, though, so it's not documented, but I did help. <laughs> he helped. All right, so. We are at this grouping of river birches, and this, I have to walk by here to mow the lawn, so this is coming off. We should have done that before we took the lights off. That would have been easier. <laughs> it might have helped a little bit, yes. This one is coming off here. I think we can leave this one for now. What do you think? No, it's going to be super unbalanced now. That one has to go, and then you're done. Yep. Now and then it's, it's just perfect. a matter of like a little cleanups here and there. I see one big crossing branch. You'll probably see it. Are you talking about this one right here? Nope. Up. Same trunk, but up. This one? That one. Yeah, with those trees behind you, it's a little hard to see what you're doing, but that's okay. Can we appreciate the sky? I think this is going to be great. Oh, look, an airplane. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I got distracted. Wow, you are so good at comedy. All right, here we are at the Tricolor Beach. I just unfloral wrapped it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, while I'm up here, Eric, I think this would be a good opportunity for me to clean up some of these in-between branches. That Do you want loppers need. or pruners? Let's go with pruners. Right under your foot. Okay. All right. So this is our tricolor beach. Again, we want to prune them while it's dormant. Yep. So why are you choosing what you're choosing? So this is just kind of a weak branch that's going to completely compete with this larger branch right here. So I was going to pull that out. Sure. Like these little guys in here, I feel like they're just going to congest that main trunk area. And this is competing with that. This is a damaged branch. We'll get rid of that. This grows in here. There's a crossing branch in front. So if you put your arm straight, where it is, straight ahead. To your left. To your left. To your left. To your left, to your left, keep going, there, up. Here. Nope, <laughs> closer to you, there you go. This is also a little congesty right here. Yeah, you can take that little one. No, I think we, we're good at this height. All right. But I know we have a big plan for what's going on underneath. So. Yeah, so let's get those big branches out first. So these branches, we're gonna raise the canopy. 
because of Vanessa Bell, but also because, you know, you want to raise the canopy when the tree's young. And this tree was planted in 2018, so it's still relatively young. Very slow growing. All right, he's got our trusty loppers. Yep, these cut up to two inches in diameter, so they should be okay. So we're gonna, we're going hard right now. This has been, we've had the plan to do this prune for a couple of years now. We knew it was happening. We were just waiting for the top of the tree to get a little bit larger. And so we're gonna like basically take the whole bottom row of branches off. Yes, you can see that Vanessa Bell, this beautiful David Austin shrub rose, has been growing up right into the lower canopy. You wanna look, get this one, Christopher? This is a big one. Here we go. Ready? I've been waiting for this. <sighs> aggressive, aggressive. Just open up some airflow so all of these plants can breathe. Ooh. <laughs> How's it looking? Looks good so far. Does she look naked? A little bit. That's gonna be a biggie. Oh, come look. Okay, but I think that was it. I think that might be enough. Maybe not. I think this one's sticking out in front on the bottom center. Oh, it looks good though. I'm gonna do it. Do it. I don't care. Being brave. <laughs> and then there's one more that needs to come. You know it's this one, right? Yep, that's the one. It's a whole right. different plant. Think about all that nice energy that's gonna get transferred upward now. Yeah. And now I'm gonna go in and clean up. Wow, it can really breathe. That feels so open. This last year in particular, you could really notice the roses were not as happy being covered up. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna go in Anything that's really small. That front one here, you've got two competing branches. I'm wondering if that right there needs no. to go. No. Nope. Or I is wouldn't it... do that one. I would do this one before that one. Do it. But I want to come look from the front. Yeah, there's two that they're actually full on rubbing now. You're thinking about a yellowy, creamy yellow rose, Vanessa Bell, all the way. Right? She's the best. And see, this little branch right here will fill in the spot here. Yeah. Vanessa Bell's very thorny. Okay, so then I feel like the left side of the tree is a little bit congested. Right? Yep, I can see it. I feel like it always has been. If you can pull one of those branches just above your head to your left down, and then if reach up as high as you can, that section right there needs something pulled out. That was it. Wonderful. I just love pruning. It's so refreshing. What do we think? I think our tricolor European beach is ready for the season. So we did some work on the red bud at the end of the season when there were still leaves on the tree, but now we can see the bones of it. I love a whimsical structured red bud, so I'm not too worried about like kind of a, a windswept shape. I like that. I think right now we're just looking for anything damaged or 
I wanted it to be more thinned out and structural for aesthetics, but also to allow sun underneath the bed. This is what eventually, eventually this one's coming off and this one's coming off. But you're not ready for it yet? I don't think this year. It's funny because when I'm looking at it, I see three bottom branches I would take immediately. I'm not ready. I think I like the width. Right? The only one I could see maybe taking now would be this one. Because I feel like this one balances this one, right? It does. But I kind of like that this one is just randomly coming out the side. Yeah, we can see what it looks like this year before we pull it all the way up. Oh, but it's getting older and it's getting more established. I guess when I'm looking at it, what I see is, let me point out with these pruners here, if those go, you've got that arch there, you've got this arch there. So it's almost like you're starting this beautiful arching shape up high, and then you would leave these lower branches out. So you'd automatically see the, um, the obelisk here, you'd see all the way down the border Naked? I think it would look naked, but you'd be staring right at that obelisk and think about how amazing Gertrude Jekyll would do with all that sunlight. And see the form of the tree up above is creating that beautiful arch. Oh, yeah, I guess it's kind of like doing it, but just taller. But come look at it from here. This is where we see it. Almost, you know, this is where we see it from the patio all the time. Look at it from this angle. So that, I mean, it changes it a little bit, but not enough. I'd still do it. All right, Christopher is back with the pruning saw. Oh, I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to prune these branches before they get too thick. I think we're at that point now where it's getting too thick. It's going. It's doing a beautiful clean cut. Am I supposed to do one upward? No. No. Just keep going. Stay focused. Wow. It's off. All right, let's see how it looks. It's really not that dramatic of a difference. <laughs> see, it's so better. Yeah. The technical term, so better. All right, so now I'm looking at the branch on the left. Go with me for this. keeping the vase. But I feel like that branch there, it horizontally matches the branch on the right. And that's what ties them together. That's true. I mean, it looks pretty good. And it's a nice clean cut. You can count the rings and see how old the tree is. Put in a lot of growth this last year. Um, it's a tough one. So you would take this one and this one as well. Yep. I'm not trying to peer pressure you into it, you know. You've got to want to cut the tree. I mean, I think, honestly, the tree is getting more mature now. 
Those branches are getting thicker. I think it's the time to do it. It's better to do it now than when it's older. We're gonna do it, so I might as well just do it. Let's do it. I love this tree. This is an Eastern red bud, the native, which is cool. We always eat at least one of the flowers every year since, isn't this a legume? Yeah. Yep. A relative of the pea and the peanut or, no, it, is it a, a pea is not a legume, but it's a relative of the pea. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a fresh pea when you eat the flower. All right, you get in there, see what you can do. Oh yeah. Uh, I might be going a little into the collar. Would it be, oh well, no, it wouldn't. Just keep going straight, make the, the wound clean. Red buds are always gnarly looking. Just yeah, I mean, it's definitely more into the tree than I would have liked, but it'll just have to repair itself. <laughs> yeah. And then this one. And then that one. Yeah, try to angle it. Like that? Yeah, try to get a nice diagonal on that one. Yeah, if you go straight there, it'll be perfect. Interesting, that's cutting a lot easier right there. <sighs> sure is, because it's probably younger. <sighs> Let me back up here. Look at that. Glorious, glorious lifted red bud that you really can't see from that angle. Let's switch. Definitely jack that one up, but. That's all right. Fine. You did better on that one. This will heal itself. Yeah, let's do the Weeping Ruby Falls Red Bud. <clears throat> I love this. I just don't like when they look like... Snuffleupagus. Yeah. So... so I'm looking for anything that's twisted and going back upwards. This would be good. Yeah, see, he's kind of create, keeping that shape going up and around, except maybe this branch, which over time could give us a little extra height. Be so much less congested. Move this guy. And yes, we're sacrificing blooms for the spring. But, but I'm okay. Now is the time for us to do this because we need to see what this tree looks like. Yeah. Oh, that one was done anyway. It's dead anyway. That's perfect. We certainly won't need it to be too thick at the bottom because there's enough catmint. Be great. All right, Christopher. Oops. Let's get these off. This yes. was a cute idea in theory, but it ended up looking too uh, carnival. Yeah, too chunky. Like it's such a beautiful streamlined trellis. And then they just looked a little bit out of scale. And luckily, I had just twist tied them on, so they're easy enough to snip. It was nice for the holidays, but not for the growing season. Okay, the cafe lights are removed. I have to say it does look a lot cleaner. 
I'm liking that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out these square trellises, which we love, but we're gonna replace them with the round Essex trellis so that they complement this Jardin Tower. So we're gonna switch them with that one there. And then we have another one on the other side that uh, Claire Austin is growing on that we'll switch it with. And then this Christopher is over here at our electrical box. One of them, we have two out here. This is one. But yeah, I'm looking at this weeping redbud, Christopher. Okay. I'm regretting the lower branches, but I think it's gonna be fine once everything fills in. Yeah, we've got Telictrum, Catmint, there's Brunnera right here. We'll have something in the urn. We can even position the urn closer. No, I don't, I don't wanna do that. And then of course the blinds get five by five. So true. no one's gonna be seeing the, the naked leg of the weeping ruby falls. Yeah, on, yeah, you're right. It's totally just looks that way because it's bare right now. I just gotta get used to it, you know? So these are the square Essex trellises and growing on this is a Stillwater's Clematis. Are they frozen in? No, that's great. Perfect. Oh! Wow. Sorry. <laughs> so that's gonna go over there on Claire, not Claire, Crown Princess Margarita. This one's probably gonna be a little trickier to get out. I got it, I got this. All right. She's got her winter rabbit protection on. Oh, that's not bad. It was basically just resting there, okay. <laughs> no, the bottom is still in the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> Could you imagine if it was that easy? I mean, it'd be nice. But I guess it would not speak well of the sturdiness. There's going to be some thorns. I mean, this this trellis has been on this rose for a number of years, right? This isn't going to come out. Yes, it will. Give it a go. You convince me to prune those branches off. I'll convince you to give this a go. Oh, it's coming. I hope the whole rose doesn't come up with it though. Based on all those little critter holes. Is the rose firmly in the ground? Oh yeah. Okay. Roses are very, very sturdy. Don't worry. This also needs to get pruned in the spring. We really wanted to do rose pruning today, but we looked at the calendar and we normally don't do it till the first week of April. Yeah, but again, like we kind of just do stuff when we can do it. Okay, all right. She's, Look at that. She's free. Wow. <laughs> okay, we'll straighten that out a we'll little bit. To, yeah, give that a little tweak before it goes in the ground. And then I think we can probably just hold off on putting this in. Yeah, let's not put this in until right we now. prune the rose back, yep. right? So yep. for now, I'm just gonna pop it in the ground behind it somewhere. Yes. Thinking we should wait. I think it's too cold to be switching trellises now. Maybe we should just yeah, let's hold off on this. Imagine we switch them. <laughs> so we're just gonna set this here for now. And then in the spring, we'll set the ground for a little more. Yeah, we'll get the dirt out of those holes and fill it back up. That one there, and then we'll switch this one over here too. Oh yeah, on that pink mink. Thinking that it was actually spring. Oh yeah, there's fresh growth on that rose. And then this one we'll switch with the one that's over on Claire. Perfect. We love watching the squirrels try and get in the squirrel proof bird feeder. They cannot get in. There we go. That 
that's filled. Christopher, I wanted to show you something I ordered on Amazon. I didn't tell you about it, I just did it. Uh-oh. It's small though. Not expensive. A little bit of snow left. Sun doesn't get back here this time of year. So I saw how's it growing. Uh, Laura, how's it growing in New Jersey? And hers fully rotate. And you'll notice that ours like get pretty far. But we have to take them off and rehook them to get them to spin all the way. So I ordered new little thingy majiggies. Oh. That'll rotate 360, so I want to put those in while I have them and before I forget. So. Okay, go grab those. I'll get the ladder. So these baskets we finally found a link to. Yes, that was awesome. And I put really, really heavy duty, duty not duders, heavy duty hangers because these baskets get really heavy. They're two feet wide. Oh. Okay, sorry. There we go. So I put really heavy duty hangers here because these baskets are two feet wide and the wind blows and you know, when it's filled with soil and they're metal. They go swinging. Yeah. So basically these are enough to hold like 800 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, when we first put them in, it said that they could hold like an entire porch swing. And so these replacement ones can hold 400 pounds each. So. Not as strong, but I don't think we're going to need them to be. Oh, that's but, a really easy changeover. Yeah. So what I'm excited about now is... Oh, and you know what? It gives it, it brings it down about two inches. Is that now they can go all the way around. Ooh. And it'll make watering easier because I stand here and then I can just spin them as I water. <laughs> so yeah. that's really cool. That was a smart idea. So thank you, Laura, from uh, How's It Growing. Oh, down in New Jersey, right? Down in Jersey. I love her garden. Good thinking. This is why it's so great to be part of a gardening community. Because not just one person knows all the answers. So following each other, supporting each other. So there's a, one of those little pin things that holds the bar in and yeah you slide the bar out and that's it yeah very simple i know it's not a huge difference but i do think we'll be able to enjoy the flowers the tiniest bit more having them this low yeah it's so much easier to care for them because it can spin now these we did order in the rust color which basically means they're unfinished and they're rusted I spray painted them with black rustoleum, but you can see the inside does kind of need a fresh coat every year, so. Yeah, it's totally worth it. These have held up really, really well other than needing an occasional spray paint. Yeah. All right, so here's an update on the Nimbus white and black stockings that were winter sowing. These are Thalictrum that I collected seeds from, and we've had them underneath the, the uh, covered part of our terrace because it was very windy and they need some water. So I'm taking these chunks of snow and stuffing them in there. And then their lovely greenhouse conditions will melt the snow and give them some water, just like nature. Eric, you have to come up here really quick. We have some action in the garden. Yes, but look how this one is thick. Look how many beautiful brand new bloom stalks are coming. Oh, wow, yeah. It's so pretty. We there's get all of our white one. Trader Joe's. Yep, there's a white one there. That's another pink. This is looking gorgeous. Now, finally, something in the garden's on schedule. This is great. I'm not going to clean this up in this area too much yet just because I want them to be a little more insulated. We are, are we three months from our first frost? Or last frost? Uh, first week of May. First week of May, so lots of time. Yeah. yeah, we've got time. But how beautiful, a nice little piece of color in the garden as we clean up. Check out our little hellebores. Yeah, we got these at Christmas time at Home Depot and instead of planting them out now, they're just kind of overwintering 
here in the garage. And I mean, they look terrible because we totally forgot they were in here, but they'll be fine. They'll melt. Yeah, splash a little water on them. Oh my gosh. All right. So I'm filling up our sprayer right now, shaking up this Bobex. So this is Bobex deer repellent. In the fall and winter, it says to apply every four to eight weeks. We're close. Uh, We're close. Yeah. So for the gallon, I think I put in 21 ounces. I think I put in seven of these scoops. That's what I've been doing. Okay. It's a lot. But I guess you do it heavier in the fall and winter? Well, maybe it sticks more or they're more desperate. I don't know. I'm desperate not to smell this, though. Well, he's about to open it, so no offense, but maybe I'll just hit the zoom button. Let's, oh, there we go. I can stay way far back and still hit zoom. <laughs> oh. Left that. Now, it smells like, um, I guess you would kind of describe it as like garlic and urine and blood <laughs> and sewer but with a minty freshness yeah but with like an undertone of freshness so this is just a uh, traditional little pump sprayer i noticed some hooves here since for a while we were some hooves some hoof prints yuck so careful don't get some overspray oh my gosh so not that there's much to eat here right now but we just want to Deter. If they're poking around, we want them to be like, ew, gross. That's kind of what we're going after. I'm going to eat this juniper, but I'm going to spray it on the juniper so the smell sticks. Yeah, that's a good idea. So they don't even want to walk by there. here. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our day of garden chores here in February in upstate New York. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Thanks for growing with us.